My name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number one through 250. Right now, we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 291. Please turn to it. Page number 291, the very first problem that you see there on page 291, problem number 166. Let's see what it has to say. Problem number 166 is a geometry problem. It's a geometry problem and the question is very straightforward. The question simply is, the question simply is, how much is x plus y? That's all. That's all they want to know. How much is the sum of the x and the y? And here's the picture. We are told that this is x. We are told that this is w degree. <clears throat> this is y degree and this is z degree. Again, one more time, what we are interested in is the, is the sum of the x and the y. The x and the y, their sum. Let's see what they tell us in the first statement. In the first statement they tell us that w is 95. w is 95. Would you excuse me just for one second? I think something happened to my throat here. W is 95. W is right here. W is 95. If W is 95 degrees, then this inside angle here, because of the fact that the straight line makes 180, let's call this W prime. This W prime would have to be 180 minus 95. 180 minus 100 is 80, so it's 85 degrees. The question is, the question is, knowing that this is 85 degrees, is that going to get us anywhere? We want to know what x and y are. There is no way to figure out what x is from here. Simply knowing that w prime is 85 does not tell us what x is, because obviously the lines are not parallel. And there is no way of figuring out y. The first statement by itself does not do the job. The first statement by itself does not do the job. A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we established the first statement by itself is not enough, we know now. Answer can I be A or D. Let's look at second statement. Now, strictly speaking, when we look at the second statement, I should actually erase this part and that part. I'm not going to erase it. Just ignore it. It doesn't exist, okay? Because if I erase it, I'm going to have to rewrite it. Uh, so let's look at the other part. Let's do it in a different color so we can keep the statement one and statement two separate. Let's, let's do statement two in red color. The statement two tells us the Z is equal to 125. Z is equal to 125. What is z? z is right here. z is 125. Similarly, if z is 125, then this inside angle has to be 125 minus 80, because again, this is a straight line. This line, this is a straight line. It's 180 degrees, and therefore, the inside angle, let's call it z prime, the z prime would have to be 180 minus 125. We know 180 minus 120 is 60, so this is going to be 55 degrees. Z prime is 55 degrees. Again, knowing that that angle is 65, uh, 55 degrees rather, knowing that that is 55 degrees, is that going to get us anywhere? Let me raise this thing, put down 85 on top of W prime so it doesn't get too crowded. So again, keep in mind, this is from the first statement. We're not looking at that. We're only looking at the fact that we know that Z prime is 55. Knowing that Z prime is 55, does that enable us to answer uh, how much is x plus y? Answer again is no. Answer again is a resounding no. We cannot figure out what x is from that. We cannot figure out for y. We have to figure out their sum. That by itself does not do the job. Now that we established that the first, the second statement by itself is also no good, we know answer is not b. Let's put them together. When we put them together, 1 and 2, when we put them together, let's see what we get. When we put them together, we know that we know that x prime, right here, x prime plus y prime, which is right here, x prime plus y prime 
plus W prime right here, W prime right here is a prime and a Z prime right here, W prime and a Z prime What do they have to add up to? They form a rectangle. They do not give it a name, so we, we can actually give it a name so make, to make our life easier here. This rectangle PQRS, let's call it, PQRS, it's a rectangle. And what do we know about some of the angles in a rectangle? The sum of the angles, sum, SU, and sum of the angles of any quadrilateral it's not a rectangle I kept calling it rectangle it's not a rectangle it's a quadrilateral it's not a rectangle obviously rectangle is so called because it has 90 degrees and you know what a rectangle is this is not a rectangle I misspoke it's a quadrilateral it's, it's simply a four-sided picture we know that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral how do you spell quadrilateral quad three Oh boy, you would think that I would know how to spell quadrilateral or at least prepare for it ahead of time. Quadrilateral is 360. This what, this what we just wrote down, this what we wrote down is an axiom. It is an axiom, and we'll talk about what an axiom is towards the end. Let's not worry about it right now. That is a fact. Some of the angles of any four-sided picture, that's what a quadrilateral is. Quadrilateral is simply a very fancy way of saying a four-sided picture, any kind of four-sided picture. Doesn't have to be a rectangle, which it is not. Doesn't have to be a square. Doesn't have to be any particular kind of four-sided picture. Any four-sided picture, the sum of the angles, the sum of the angles of any quadrilateral is 360. We know that. The question is, why is that? Do you know? It's, the reason is very straightforward. If you have a four-sided picture here, here is a four-sided picture. There is a four-sided picture. Why is the sum of the angles in this of this quadrilateral 360? Because the quadrilateral is nothing but a union of two triangles. A quadrilateral is a union. A quadrilateral is a marriage of two triangles. We know the sum of the angles in this triangle is 180. We know the sum of the angles of this triangle is 180, and therefore the sum of the, all the angles in the quadrilateral is 360. You can show the union this way, or we could have shown the union using the other diagonal. Anyway, the point here is a quadrilateral is simply a union of two triangles and therefore the sum of the angles in the quadrilateral is 360, which is what we're going to use here. We're going to use that fact here. It is 360. But where is that going to get us? Okay, now I'm, going to, I'm going to pick up speed here. I'm going at a too much of a leisurely pace. That, so this implies that x prime plus y prime must equal 360 minus this guy right here, w prime plus z prime, but we know what a w prime is. w prime is right here. It's 85. 85 plus z prime, which we also know right here, z prime right here is 55. 85 plus 55, 85 plus 55, 0, 1, 13, 14. So it's 140. So it's 360 minus 140. 360 minus 140. Which is going to give us 360 minus 160 would have been 200, so it's 220. Now what does that get us? So now we know that x prime plus uh, x prime, we know that x prime plus y prime is this quantity right here. We are almost there. We are almost there. We're going to continue. We're going to con let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue right here. Let's continue. Right now we're going to use this information on the top here. So now we know that x prime plus y prime is this quantity right here. But we also know that x plus x prime x plus x prime makes a straight line which is 180. We also know that y plus y prime, y plus y prime is also a straight line. It makes a straight line. y plus y prime is also 180. Which means that this these four angles add up to 360. Okay, we are almost there. x plus x prime, x plus x prime is 180 y plus y prime, y plus y prime is 180, so this quantity plus this quantity is 360. Now let's, let's separate the x prime and the y prime separately because we know what they are. They add up to 220. We're almost there. x plus xy plus x prime plus y prime is equal to 360. 
x prime, x prime plus y prime we just found out is 220 therefore x plus y is equal to 360 minus 220 and whatever that answer happens to be 140 but the million dollar question here the million dollar question that we need to answer here is that did we really have to do all this work these are, these are as I always remind you these are these are what are known as data sufficiency our only job here is to be able to answer the simple question which is do we have enough data to be able to answer this question that is being asked but we don't actually have to answer it nobody is asking us exactly what x plus y is what they are asking here is did we provide you enough data in one statement first statement by itself or second statement by itself or putting the two information together from the first and the second statement if we, if we were able to see all the steps that we did here if you were able to if you were able to do all those steps in your head without actually calculating anything you just have to know that we, I can fit this piece with that piece for example let's start the story what from, from from the very beginning they had told us in the first statement that w is 195 uh, w is 95 okay look w is 95 the first statement tells us the second statement tells us that z is 125 again the point here is not what w is the point here is not what z is the point is if, okay i'm going to start the process from the very beginning and I'm going to show you that one of, we don't actually have to do all of this thing in the real exam. If we know W, we know W prime. If we know W, we know W prime. If we know Z, if we know Z, we know Z prime. If we know these two guys, if we know these two guys, we can find out the sum of those two guys because these four add up to 360. So these four add up to 360. If we know these two guys, we can find out the sum of those two. And if we can figure out the sum of X prime and the Y prime, we can figure out the sum of the X and the Y. It is the sum of the x, y that we are looking for. They're not asking us how much is x. They're not asking us how much is y. Don't try to con don't try to find the x and the y individually. There is no way to figure out what x is. There is no way to figure out what y is individually. And nobody's asking us for this. The question here is, do we have enough data to figure out their sum? The answer is yes, because once we know once we know the sum of the x prime and the y prime, the sum of these two is just 360 minus the sum of these two, which is right here. But we don't actually have to do all of this thing. We simply have to go through the, go through the steps in our head and just simply ask ourselves, can we carry on? Can we continue? Can we go to the next step? Can we finish our job if we had to? Answer here is yes. And therefore, the answer is C. Therefore, the answer is C. One does not actually sit here and do everything. Yet. That will take forever and ever. Do you understand? Let's go to the next one. 167. 167, which is why which is why this problem ended up taking 10 minutes to do it. For, for two reasons, first of all, we're doing every bloody step here, and I'm explaining everything. Of course, in the real exam, you just have to do it in your head in a matter of a minute, or two minutes at the most, that's it. Anything more than two minutes, and you're not doing very well. Number 167. Number 167, let's see what it is asking. We are told that n and k are positive integers. We know that n and k are positive. We also know that they are whole numbers. They cannot be decimal. Then they have to be positive. They cannot be negative. The question is, is square root of n plus k greater than 2 times square root of n? That's the question. Now, as always, when they give you something convoluted, something convoluted like this, when, when, they give a, when they give you something in a, presented in an algebraic fashion, an algebraic expression, an algebraic equation, algebraic inequality, whatever it is, the very first thing we must do is simplify. Simplify whatever it is that is presented to us in a convoluted, convoluted way in the simplest term as possible. Simplify it as much as you can and then worry about looking at the two statements. Don't look at two statements right now. What's the bloody point of looking at the two statements right now? We don't know what we're looking for. We have to simplify it to see what we're looking for. We can, we're not going to be able to answer the question the way it is presented it in a row form. We have to cook it a little bit. Let's begin cooking. Square both sides. Nobody ever said that squaring both sides is illegal. Of course you can square both sides and it will not affect the inequality. If you square this side, the square of the square root of n plus k is simply n plus k. Which has to be greater than the square of that quantity. The square of 2 is 4. The square of 2 is 4. And again, square of square root of n is just going to be n. This, I see an n here, we see an n here, let's subtract n from both sides. And that's it, it doesn't take that long. It doesn't take that long. So what we're looking for here, 
the question here is, is k more than 3n? That's what they're asking. Is k more than 3n? That is the question. Now, if they provide us enough data in either of the two statements to be able to answer this question, we are done. Let's see what, now, let's, now we are ready. Let's see what they tell us in the first statement. Do you really want to see what they tell you in the first statement? Are you sure? Let's look at the first statement, shall we? There's a great deal of suspense as to what they might say in the first statement. What we want to find out, this is the question, is this true? In the first statement, they tell us that k is greater than 3n. Tell you what, I am so inspired, I am so pumped up right now, I'm going to put it right here. What do you know? This is our first statement. So can you tell, the question is, can you tell if k is more than 3n, if you are being told that k is more than 3n? Of course the first statement is enough. A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we, <coughs> excuse me. Now that we have established that the first statement by itself is enough, we know now that the answer cannot be B, C, or E. The answer would have to be either A or D. If it turns out that the second statement by itself is also enough, then the answer is D, as you know. Otherwise, it will remain A. Let's look at second statement, shall we? That was the first statement. We're done with the first statement. Let's look at second statement. The second statement tells us that... Second statement tells us that... N plus K... N plus K... Is greater than 3N. N plus K... Is greater than 3N. What we, have, what we were told... What we were told is, right here, I'm going to erase this part, I'm going to erase all of this part, we don't need any of this thing. It'll be easier just to look at this statement right here. If we square both sides, what we get is n plus k is more than 4n. That's the question. Is, is n plus k more than 4n? That's the question. Is n plus k more than 4n? What the second statement tells us is that the n plus k is more than 3n. So simply knowing that n plus k, the sum of the n and the k is more than 3 times n, does not enable does not enable us to tell for sure whether it's going to be more than four times n. It is. We know it's more than three times n because they're telling us that. But maybe n plus k is equal to three and a half times n, or maybe n plus k is three point one times n, or maybe it is. Uh, you get the idea. Maybe it is uh, n plus k is exactly four times n, or maybe it is more than four times n. Who knows? This is not enough. Second statement does not do the job. The answer is a. The answer is a. Let's go on to the next one, number 168. Number 168. Number 168, we are told that the production index, production index, let's call it P, is directly proportional to efficiency index let's call it E. We are told that the production proportional is directly proportional to efficiency index E. Listen, I never we never talked about axiom. Of course you know what an axiom is but, but there is a reason why I'm making too much fuss about it. You will see it in a second. If you had to define axiom, if somebody were to ask you what does an axiom mean well, you know what it means. An axiom is something that is taken as true. Something that is taken as true by definition. If something is taken as true by definition, then that's an axiom. It's an axiom. If somebody asks you uh, uh, how many minutes uh, in, in, in an hour, and you tell them 60 minutes, and they tell you why, you tell them uh, this axiom. That's the axiom. That's how we define our universe. We define our universe to have three feet in a yard. And just, just the way it is, it's, ex it's an axiom. But the reason we are making a big fuss about it is that axiom is a noun. What's an adjective of it? What's an adjective? An adjective of axiom is axiomatic. Axiomatic. If somebody asks you, why are there 60 minutes in an hour? Do you tell them, oh, this is axiomatic. What you're telling them is that I don't have to prove it to you. I don't have to show it to you why. It's axiomatic. It's just, just the way we define our universe. It's just the way we live our life. That's just how we define it. That's all it is. It's axiomatic. I don't have to prove it to you. I'm looking at here a vocabulary thing. There you go. We did learn the word. Day number 38. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, 
Just type in GMAT vocabulary words, day number 68, uh, day number 38, and you will learn the word axiomatic. The synonym of an axiom would be a synonym of axiom would be a tautology. A tautology is something that is also something that does not need to be proven. A tautology is something that is true by definition. And if I'm, I'm guessing that if we learned the word axiomatic and axiom on day number 38, we must have learned tautology on the same day because there are synonyms. What the word do you know? It is day number 38. It's important that we work on our vocabulary. Do you understand? I know we are here for the math and we are not here. I understand. I'm fully cognizant of the fact that we are not here to be taught English language by some freaking foreigner. But it does not hurt to work on the vocabulary. Do you understand? 168. Now, this, prob this problem, the problem with this problem, the problem with this question, the problem with this, uh, this uh, unit, problem with this problem sounds silly. The difficulty with this problem, let's put it this way, the issue with this problem is that it requires that you understand the concept of proportionality. It requires that you understand what it means for two variables to be proportional, how to present them in, in the form of an equation, how to manipulate that. I'm not going to do all of that here. If you're not familiar with the concept of proportionality and if you don't know how to convert this into an equation, if something like this appears in the exam, you're going to have to skip it. When two variables are said to be proportional, when two variables are said to be directly proportional, what that means is that, for example, let me give you a simple example of two variables that are directly proportional. For example, I just told you I'm not going to do it and I started it. Okay. Here's, let me make up something simple, okay? Let me make up some, something simple. Here are the number of books I'm buying, and here is the, here is the amount of money that I'm spending. Let's call it D for dollars. D for dollars. If I buy one book, I pay $2. If I buy two books, I pay $4. If I buy five books, I pay $10. If I buy 25 books, I pay $50. Here you would say the number of books that you buy, rather, here you would say that the amount of dollar that you spend is directly proportional to the number of books that you're buying. And what's the, what's the proportionality? And this, this is how we write it. We say that D equals some constant times N. This some constant that we see here, this some constant that we see here is called a proportionality constant. A proportionality constant. In order for us to be able to convert this statement into an equation, we have to know what that proportionality constant is. Because what we know right now is that the production index, the production index P, is directly proportional to the efficiency index E. What that, what that crosslets this, uh, what this crosslets this into is that P is equal to some constant time E. I'm going to call it K1 for the constant instead of simply calling it K, because soon we're going to introduce another constant, so we have to, we have to be able to distinguish the two separate, two separate uh, quantities, K1 and K2. But that's what it is. We have to know the K. The value of the const constant, proportionality constant. Can you tell me what the K is in this instance? Of course, as you can see, the number, number amount of dollar that we spend is always two times the number of books we buy. So the proportionality constant here is very simple to find out. The proportionality constant here is simply 2. D equals 2 times N. And 2 is your proportionality constant. We have to know that proportionality constant. Do you understand? Anyway, let's carry on. So that's what we get. That's what we get from the first statement. They go on to tell us that the efficiency index E, they go on to tell us that the efficiency index E is directly proportional, directly proportional to investment index I. Again, what this tells us is that E is directly proportional to investment index, and there's a different, the proportionality constant in this relationship, of course, is going to be different than the one over there, which is hence the use of the K1, the subscript 1, because here we're going to have a separate, another constant, which, which is going to be K2. So this is K2 times I. That's what we are told here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to write these two equations down on the top there and erase everything because we need the room. So let's do it on the top here. Now we're going to write simply the two equations down. That's what they are told. That's what we are told. We are told that proportional for p. We are told that the that the, that the production index is is directly proportional to efficiency, which implies that p must equal some 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 constant times e. 
we are told that the efficiency index is directly proportional to the level of investment, which implies that E must equal some other constant, K2, times I. What exactly are they asking? They are asking what is P when, so the question is, when I is equal to 70, how much is P? Very simple question. When I is equal to 70, how much is P? Let's begin our work. Now we are ready to look at the two statements. In the first statement, in the first statement they tell us that uh, E is equal to half when I is equal to 60. And we know that E is equal to, right here, E is equal to some, 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 some constant K2 times I. We know E is half when I is 60. We can figure out K2. K2 boils down to the value of the K2 is going to point. Again, the point here is that it is possible to figure out the value of K2. That's the point in the real exam. In the real exam, the point is not what, what is the value of the K2. The point here is that the, we are able to figure out the value of K2. Simply knowing what K2 is, does that enable you to figure out what P is when I is equal to 70? But if you know K, listen carefully, when you know K, when you know K2, once we know K2, and once we know I, we can figure out the E. Okay, keep listening. Once we figure out the E, we can put it in here, and the question is how much is P when I is equal to 70? Well, we do not know K1. That's the point. In the real exam, that is the point. In the real exam, the point is not to do it out the whole thing. Well, I'm going to do it out, obviously, we're going to finish it, but you can, you can see it's not getting us anywhere. It is a dead end. Without knowing the K1, we're not going to be able to go anywhere. The first statement by itself does not do the job. The first statement by itself is no good. A, D, B, C, E. The first statement by itself is no good. Now that we've established the first statement by itself is no good, we know now, answer cannot be A or D. It would have to be B, C, or E. Let's finish it up. We're going to finish it up for the hell of it. So K2 is going to be 1 over 120, actually. Unless I'm mistaken. But even if I'm wrong, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what the values are. We, we, nobody's asking us how much it is. We just have to know, is it enough? Again, you, we put this in here. We figure out, I don't know if you want me to do all of that thing. But without the value of K1, we're not going to get anywhere because P, right here, P is equal to K1 times E. And E, here's our K1, and E, E is right here. E is K2 times K2 times I, which is where this came from. Well, anyway, looks. So in order to figure out the P, we know the value of we know the value of K2, we just found the K2 right here, K2 is right here. We are told what I is, I we are told is 70 right here. We know I, we know K2, we, we can figure out the P if we know K1, but we do not know the K1, which is why it's a dead end. It's not getting us anywhere. Let's go to second statement. I need a break. Second statement. Maybe second statement will be a little bit more helpful. Again, keep in mind, these are the two, two, two equations that we have here. In the second statement, they tell us that P is equal to 2 when I is 50. Where is P and where is I? I see. There is a P right there, so let's see what we can do here. P, we know, is K1. times E and K1 and E we know is K2, K2 times I. Again, let's see what it's going to get us here. I is 50. I is 50. This is also a dead end. This is also a dead end. It's not going to get us anywhere. Uh, Just give me one second. Let's put them together here. K1, K2, I'm going to put them together. Let's call this K3, whatever that is. I. Oh, never mind. 
we just have to figure out the value of k1 and k2. k1 and k2. So p we know is 2, p we know is 2, and when i we are told when, when i is 50. We can figure out the value of k3. k3 is equal to 2 over 50, which is same as 1 over 25. I think this is not a dead end. We know the value, we know the product of k1 and k2 now. The product of k1 and k2, which is what we're calling k3, k3 is 1 over 25. Let's see what we can do with it. Let's see what we can do with it. This is the question. When i is 70, how much is p? When i is 70, how much is p? That's what the question is. And the relationship between the i and the p is right here. The relationship between the i and the p is right here. Right here. p is equal to k3 times i. p is equal to k3 times i. Remember the k3 that we, that we, that we are calling k3 is our own creation, which is the product of k1 and k2, which we just found out is 1 over 25. That's it. We are done. I was wrong. Second statement by itself is actually enough. I think I almost blew this question. I almost got it wrong. I might have gotten it wrong in the exam because I was being too cocky, you see. That's it. We can figure it out. Once we know the value of K3, it is 1 over 25. 1 over 25. We know I is... When uh, I is... Question is how... When I is 70. Question is how much is P when I is 70. Right here. When I is 70, how much is P? I is 70. There you go. That's how much the P is. That's what it, whatever that happens to be. It's going to be 70 over 25, we divide top and bottom, but we don't actually have to do it. It's going to be 5 and 7 has 1, 5, or 14 over 14 over 5, or 2 and 4 fifths. The production index is going to be 2.8, but that wasn't necessary, you understand? That was, that was not necessary. I think I almost blew it at the end, didn't I? Because I was in too much of a rush to finish it, you see? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I know.